In this tutorial, I'm going to show you my favorite way of making fuselages in Digital Aircraft Modeler. I select an aircraft that I want to make. In this case, I've decided to make a Cessna 172. I go to Google. I click on the Images link. And what I'm looking for is some sort of a plan for the airplane, a three view. I type in Cessna 172 and perhaps plan. I wait until uh, to see what comes up and I'm looking for a three view and, and these are excellent. Uh, this particular one right here would do very nicely. I then go ahead and click on it. It comes up. I see the picture that I want to work with. I right click and I say save picture as. Uh, now I go to my area that I want to work in. I have a doc or a folder here called damn work. I create a new folder and I call it uh, Cessna. 172. Everything I do for the Cessna 172, including the drawings, I'll keep in this folder. So I open it up and I select to save this picture. Now I won't be using this particular picture um, only because for this video I don't want to take a chance on hitting anybody's copyrights. I have another image that I'll use which is very much like this one. There are several like this one. Uh, the one I'm going to use is one that I've made myself. Uh, but for your work, you don't need to worry about the copyright. You're, you can use anything you can find. You're not going to incorporate it into the model. You're only going to trace its outlines. All right, so now we have the image that we want to work with. Uh, we can go ahead and close this out and go to Digital Aircraft Modeler and begin. All right, I'm in Digital Aircraft Modeler, and I've just downloaded the texture that I want to use, the uh, bitmap I want to use for a trace image. Um, I'm in Workspace 1. I go to Sketch and I start a new sketch. The first sketch I'm going to do the side of the airplane, so I work in the XZ plane from the origin. The little 12 inch by 12 inch sketch plane comes up. The first thing we want to do is set up our trace mode. We load the texture. Um, this is the texture. It's in the documents damn work, Cessna 172 area. This is not the one I've just downloaded. This is actually one that I had created previously and we'll use it. I've loaded that texture into the trace bitmap control. I select it and it appears in the space. Let me zoom out so we can see what we're doing here a little bit. Um, you can see this is 12 inches so this is probably 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 feet. This is probably a 16 foot airplane at this point and the ratio is not quite right. It's a little compressed vertically. I want to go ahead and reset the ratio that sets the bitmap or the image in space at the same per, um, ratio uh, that the uh, trace image that we downloaded or actually I made is from um, I turn on the aspect ratio lock here and this horizontal size is set right now for 80 inches 80.6 inches let's work as a six foot airplane that's 72 inches across you can see now that this distance from the edge to the edge of the trace image is six feet. The airplane's almost to the edge. It'll be almost six feet, and that's fine. I don't want to be too careful about trying to get exactly the size here. I can always resize my final model later. Um, so I'll say, uh, I would say okay at that point, but I want to work with the um, side view here. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit and um, the center, the origin of space is right there. I want to modify and using my mouse wheel, depressing my mouse wheel, I'm moving the image up here like so and I also want to flip the X. Don't forget in Digital Aircraft Modeler the nose of the airplane points along the positive X axis and so I want to put it just like this. The other thing I want to do is I want to approximately center the uh, outline of the fuselage here to the origin the reason for that will become obvious in a second. I'm satisfied with that. I say OK. We have our um, fuselage where we want uh, where we want it, or, I mean our trace image where we want it in space. Next thing to do is to trace it. I'm going to use the line tool. What I'm making here is just a guide outline. Uh, does not have to be very precise at all. I'm going to use it to help me understand how large my formers are my, as I put them in place. So I'm coming along the outside edge of the fuselage just like so, not being very careful, uh, not taking a lot of time with this, um, and uh, almost done here. Um, 
and there we go and so now that is set if I highlight it you can probably see it a little bit better uh, that is the outline of the side view of the fuselage we have that set up in a sketch in the XZ plane the next thing I want to do is have a top view um, let me go ahead and uh, zoom out here a little bit and uh, show you with rotating the sketch what we have we have the uh, trace image sitting there in space and we have an, a polygon that is the outline of the fuselage sitting here on that sketch plane. So next I need a new sketch plane. Uh, this time it will be in the XY and you'll see why here in a second. Uh, let me rotate this. You can see that we've created a new sketch plane that is orthogonal or 90 degrees or perpendicular to the, uh, the side view sketch plane. I want to put a trace of the outline of the top of the fuselage in this sketch plane. So let's do that. We go to our setup, and we don't need to load the texture again. We already have it. We select the texture. We do the same thing we did before. We modify it. We turn on the aspect ratio lock. I mean, we reset the ratio. Turn on the ratio lock. And change this to 6 feet, which is 72 inches. And uh, as you can see, the plane is pointing the wrong direction. We need to rotate. And this will rotate it by 90 degrees, and sure enough, that's the direction we want it to be. The other thing we need to do is we need to line up the top view of the fuselage with this polygon we've created before. So I need to modify it. Before I do that, I want to flat view in the top view so that I can see clearly exactly where I'm putting that. And when I, I might as well zoom in. Now you want to zoom in before you click on the modify because if you have modify on and you roll the mouse wheel, it'll actually resize the uh, trace image, which is not what we want to do. Uh, you can see the outline of the polygon that we had before sitting here. There's the nose of it, there's the tail of it. Um, and so I want to move this entire space over a little bit. Now I click the modify and now by using the mouse wheel I'm moving the actual fuselage. And I move it so that it's approximately centered there and um, the nose and so on match. And I say OK. Uh, click on the rotate on the sketch and rotate it and make sure that I've lined it up reasonably well and it looks real good where it is so let's flat view to this and let's outline this top view here once again I don't need to be terribly careful about this um, this is only going to be used to guide me when I'm making my former polygons and that'll become clear here as we proceed um, let's put that there and uh, finish this up with a couple more clicks here and so our top view is set uh, if I highlight that polygon you can see the shape that I've created and obviously I haven't been terribly careful that uh, bottom edge is not quite right uh, we, it's only going to be a suggestion for us let me rotate the view and you can see now that we have both of those sitting in space it might be easier if I turn off the trace so you can see both of those polygons sitting there in space those determine the width and the height of our former polys as we work here now. So let's go back to sketch one, say edit sketch, and the next task is to select where we want the former, go former uh, sketches to be. Um, think about this for a second. We want a former um, at each one of these locations where this is changing shape. Um, so we want uh, one at the nose of the aircraft, one about here, we want one about uh, here, uh, and so on. Uh, so really they, they almost conform with where we've made our points. Well, we wanna, don't want to overkill this tutorial. Um, if I were doing this for real, I might make more formers than I'm going to make here. But let me show you how to make the former polygons. First we need to make lines where we want the former sketches to be. I want one at the nose of the aircraft. I've clicked on my line tool. I click here. I hold down my control key. If I if I move this like so, you can see it'll go any direction. If I hold my control key down, it locks on the vertical, and that's what I want. Uh, at when I have the point about where I want here, I use my right mouse button, click it, and say restart. That finishes that line and allows me to start another one. I'm going to put one fairly close here to that one. I'm doing the same thing, holding my control key down. Uh, when I get to the top, I say restart. Um, let's put one, um, well, you know the curve here isn't too extreme, let's, for the sake of minimizing the data, let's move one all the way back to here next. And restart. I need one at the beginning of the windshield, that's about right here. If I, I didn't quite have that in the right spot, that's easy to move this line afterwards, so that's fine. I need one about in the middle of the windshield, right about here. And restart. 
and I need one at the uh, top of the wing where the top of the windshield is and again I'm going to have to move that one a little bit here in a minute um, the fuselage changes direction right about here on the bottom I think that's probably important I'll put one there at the back of the top of the windshield here I'll put one and at this location I'll put a former like so and uh, these both lines stay completely straight all the way to the back of the fuselage so I really don't need another one until the very rear of the airplane and when I'm done with that I can turn off my line tool that last point that's left in space from the beginning of the next new line it doesn't really matter um, you can delete it if you want to uh, which I just did it's gone alright we have our former sketches in place um, A through J, that is 1 through 10, and there's A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. So we can always see which, where we are on the fuselage uh, based on these letter designations here. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to save the project. I haven't done it yet, so I say save as. Uh, it takes me back to my document stand work Cessna 172, and I give it a file name. Cessna 172 should be fine. I like to give it an A. Um, and then I can save at various important places in the uh, drawing uh, with another letter. That way I can always go back to a location if I make some changes that I don't like. 